Hey folks, how you doing? Today's lecture will focus on inflation. Now, inflation, by definition, is an increase in price of goods and services and wages in one given time. And the opposite would be deflation, where there is a decrease in prices of goods, services, and wages in one given time. So we want to look at inflation and see who benefits from inflation. What we can call winners and losers. So when you think about inflation, the biggest winner of inflation are those who are earning a wage, what we call laborers. So people who are working are going to win when it comes to inflation. And this makes sense because obviously their wages are increasing. And it's very hard to find someone to say today, I don't want to see a higher wage. On the opposite column, those who lose are folks who are going to employ those laborers, what we call the employers. At a higher wage, employers would now need to cut in other areas, perhaps maybe fixed costs, uh, perhaps may have to look at their own profit and cut that. So they tend to lose when it comes to inflation. Now, at the same time for inflation, another group that wins often are those who are producers. And the law of supply states, as price of a good increases, producers will produce more. So producers during inflation are motivated to make more goods. On the flip side, those who lose during inflation are people who are consumers. Because now the buying power of consumers is less if the price of a good increases more. So if you were to buy, let's say, a hamburger for $1 today, inflation, let's say by 10%, next year, you would now have to pay $1.10. You need more money to make up uh, what you bought initially of that one hamburger. So consumers lose when we experience inflation. A third group that wins with inflation are those who are home owners. Again, they see the value of their home increase and that's great for them. And now they can build equity. And for those who lose in the same scenario, are those who are renters. And with a higher level of goods and services, which could also lead to a higher cost of rent, renters are now going to have to pay 30, 40% of their income per month on rent alone. And one more group to include, winners, are those who borrow money, what we call debtors. And this makes sense because if you are gonna borrow money from a bank, if you borrow $100 today and you'll pay the bank back next year, next year that $100 is not gonna be worth $100. So debtors are gonna win when we borrow money and inflation rises. That's why those who lend money to us, what we call the creditors, the banks, are not really that stupid and they charge a rate of interest when borrowing money. Hence the term interest rates. So just to make sure that they get the money back, they need to include a percent to borrow their money. That's called inflation. This is kind of why if you look at inflation today, we see inflation at around one to 2% in the United States. So in essence, if you are going to borrow money from a bank, they should, in theory, only charge you 2% to cover their cost uh, for the following year if inflation is 1% to 2%. But some creditors, like credit cards, may charge more than 2%, sometimes 10 12 20%. That covers more than just inflation. It also covers an extreme profit motive uh, for those who could take advantage of the uh, credit, credit card borrowers. So it just shows you once again, the kind of dilemma we see uh, when it comes to those who win and those who lose when there is inflation. 
This next part I want to talk about is how to measure inflation. So measuring inflation. Now there are many indices out there that we use to measure inflation, but there is one common index called the CPI. And this stands for the Consumer Price Index. Consumer Price Index. The advantage of this is it takes into account about 80% of all consumers in the United States because about 80% of consumers live in an urban area. The only drawback about this, though, is it does not take into account those who live in rural areas, about 20% of the population. The CPI also includes more than 30,000 items, uh, goods, services that you and I as consumers buy on a monthly, yearly basis. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty good measurement of inflation uh, based on consumer spending. Now there's a website, if you go on to Google and you type in CPI history, you will see a website called inflationdata.com. And this gives you the inflation index, CPI index, from 1913 all the way to 2020. We're going to use that index as a way to measure inflation. So for example, if we know today, 2020, that the price of gasoline, gasoline is now around $2.80 per gallon, we want to know if we are paying too much, too, too little, or just about right when gas prices uh, were set in 1970, let's say. So what we need to do is we need to know exactly what the price of gasoline was back in 1970. So in 1970, one gallon of gas was approximately 36 cents per gallon. Back in 1970, per gallon. Again, we're trying to ask the question, are we paying over, just about right, or under, uh, with gas prices today. So in order to be able to know that, we have to use a CPI to calculate what the price should be based on inflation. So here we're going to use 1970 at 36 cents per gallon. We're then going to multiply this with the CPI of today, 2020, on the numerator and CPI of 1970. So based on the CPI history, that uh, website that gives us the index, the CPI of 2020 is around 258, and the CPI of 1970 is about 38. Now we can divide 258 over 38 times 0.36 to see if we are overpaying, paying about right, or underpaying gas price per gallon today. So once we have done the steps, we end up with $2.44 per gallon. So now when we measure what the price of gas should be based on inflation, to what we're paying today at $2.80, we can then see that we are overpaying today. And that's how you calculate the inflation rate from a different year to today's current.